In this video, I want to give a brief introduction to the if and while control constructs in Scala. We're going to start with these because they are probably the most similar to what you have seen in other languages. So I'll go ahead and I'll put some code inside of our main here. Instead of just printing hello world, how about I say we're going to count up to 10. I would do that with a while. The while loop, as it is in other languages, takes a conditional statement. Like Java, this conditional has to be a Boolean. So if I wanted to count to 10, well, first I would have to introduce a var. One of the things to note, I said previously, you should avoid the use of vars. To use a while loop, you almost ha always have to use a var or something else that mutates, which means that you're really not supposed to use while loops all that much. But they're very simple, and they do exactly what uh, the same things they do in other programming languages. So they're a reasonable place to, to start showing you things. Sorry, plus equals one. Okay, so I create i, set it equal to zero. While it's less than 10, I'm gonna print it out, and then I increment by one. If you're coming from certain other languages, you might want to write something like that. That is not valid in Scala. There is no prefix or postfix increment operator. There are uses of plus plus, but they are in a infix notation. If you want to add one, you will use plus equals one, which is of course just a shorthand for i equals i plus one. And those do the same thing. We run it and you can see that in addition to hello world, we print out the numbers zero through nine. The while loop in Scala is exactly like what you might be used to in other languages. It is just a statement. It does not produce a value. Technically it produces a value of unit because everything has to produce something, but it produces no useful information. There is also a do while. So the while is a pre-check loop. The condition is checked before the first time through. You can also have a do while loop, which looks like this. This is uh, while loops aren't used that much in Scala, do while loops are definitely not used that much. Uh, but this is a post check loop, so the condition is checked at the end, and the body will always happen once, at least once. What about ifs? So the if looks like it does in other languages. So we have our age up here. I could say something if age is less than 18. Okay, so I'm going to write this out kind of in the way you might be used to writing it in other languages, and then I will show how I'd probably clean it up to make it more Scala-like, and it will also show the difference in the if in Scala and other languages. So I'm going to write the if here as a statement. Um, we're assuming you're trying to get into some place and you have to be 18 to get in. And so if you're under 18, you can't print line. Okay. Our age happens to be greater than 18, so this would print come on in if we were to run this. This is the way you use ifs in, in most programming languages. They are statements. And so you have something that happens if the condition is true and something that happens if the condition is false. In Scala, the if is also an expression. And in fact, it would probably be more common to do this in a number of other ways. I guess I'll go ahead and I will leave that version there as opposed to erasing it. One way of doing this might be to have declare a variable. And that variable is just going to be a string. something like that. So now response is a string, which will either be one of those values, and then I can print it at the bottom. In many other languages, uh, if you wanted to have this stored inside of a string, for example, using the statement form, if I wanted this in a string, what I would do is I would have to declare it, I would have to declare it as a var, and then I would have to change its value in these two things. Uh, in the two different options for the true and the false. It is much preferred, we've already talked about the fact you should use vowels, 
by having the if be an expression, and in fact, basically everything that's in Scala other than the while loop is an expression, it can give you back a value. By having it be an expression, we can make response be a val, it gets one assignment, and that comes from here. If you're coming from Java, there is a conditional expression, it's called the ternary operator. Uh, it's just not used as much because it's a little bit harder to read. We could theoretically, uh, if response were some were part of, well, write this yet yeah, another way. Same basic idea, but I'm going to write it in a third possible way where I am just going to take this expression and use it in the print line. If I were going to do that, I'd probably actually shorten this up, get rid of all the curly braces, and have something that looks like that. So that's a brief introduction to the while and the if. While is a statement that you probably won't use all that much because when you use it, you uh, have to have something that's mutable like a bar. The if can also be used as a statement. You can use it in the way that you're used to using it in other programming languages, but a lot of times in Scala, you will use it as an expression because it gives you back a value. There is one, I guess, other nuance to note here. This really makes the most sense if A, <laughs> there is an else. If you use an if as an expression and you don't have an else, the else is implicitly defined to give you back unit, which winds up not being very useful because I don't know, let's just call it A. If, I'll just put in a true here because I don't really care about this. What I care about more, I else five. Okay. This is a very weird thing to put in code. This would not be a very useful uh, declaration because I can either get back high or a five. This is a string. This is an int. Well, if it could be a string or it could be an int, what is A? It's a type any. We'll talk more about exactly what an any is, but the, the takeaway message is any isn't all that useful. Okay? So when you do use an if as an expression, the types of both the true branch and the false branch should generally be the same. Okay? And if they're not the same, you're probably going to get back some weird type that is not what you wanted. As I mentioned earlier, if we leave off the else completely, Scala kind of fills it in as returning unit and we still have an any type here. So we get something that's not useful to us. So you'll generally want your types on the two branches of your if to have the same type.